like I said, this is the intermediate class. And with this intermediate class, um, this is the third intermediate class that, uh, that we do. Okay, so we, we have the third intermediate class today. And um, last week, we worked on a few things. We worked on using possessive adjectives, right? We did using possessive adjectives last week. And we did sentences with possessive adjectives, okay? So that's what we did last week. And first, I'm gonna do a quick review of last week's lesson before we start. Today's lesson, I wanna do a review. So if, 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 you know, write this down. If not, I, we will have the video to you very soon. Uh, but last week's lesson, we dealt with subject pronouns and with object pronouns. The subject pronouns are on top and they are I, you, he, she, it, we, you, and they. The object pronouns are on the bottom. Me, you, him, her, it, us, you, and them. Okay, so those are the subject pronouns, those are the object pronouns. Here's the definition of what we need to know. We need to know the verb of a sentence in order to know what the subject pronoun is and what the object pronoun is. So, the verb is the action in a sentence. La acción de una oración is a verbo, right? So in English, the verb is the action in a sentence. The subject does the action. It usually comes before the verb. So el sujeto hace la acción y usualmente viene antes del verbo. That's how you know what the subject is, is. The object of the verb receives the action and it comes after the verb. El objeto del verbo viene después de la acción y uh, entonces siempre viene después del verbo. So that's how you know when to use subject pronouns and object pronouns. Ahí es que sabemos si tenemos que usar un pronombre para los sujetos o un pronombre para los objetos. Si el, si el sustantivo está haciendo la acción, entonces, y queremos usar un pronombre, tiene que ser de la lista de arriba, subject pronouns. Si el sustantivo eh, está recibiendo la acción y está después del verbo, entonces tenemos que usar la lista de abajo, object pronouns. Okay. En la próxima página, en la next page, I'm going to show you some very, very simple sentences, and they use, and they use um, subject and object pronouns. So, for example, we have, I know you, the subject is I, the verb is no, the object is you. I know you, subject pronoun, and then the object pronoun. You know me, the subject is you, the verb is no, the object is me. He knows her, the subject is he, the verb is knows, the object is her, Right, and then I want you to see the difference between the next, this one and the next one. She knows him. The subject is she. The verb is knows, and the object is him. And what we have there in those last two is that the verb has an s, and the verb has an s because, like we like we discussed last time, the verb has an s because it's third person singular. So. When the subject is third person singular, the verb in the simple present, you need to put an S. So that's why we have he knows, she knows, right? Okay, so and we have a quick question, so I'm going to pause for one second. No se ve claramente la imagen. Um, that's happened before, eso ha pasado antes. Puede ser algo con la conexión del, del, del internet, um, pero si se arregla. Eh, Pasa poco y después de un tiempo creo que se arregla. Si sigue pasando, me deja saber, pero por, por lo general, eso sí se va a poder arreglar. Um, eh, puede ser la conexión. Si, si tienes Wi-Fi, trata de ponerte más cerca del Wi-Fi. Si puedes conectar directamente al Internet, um, trata de conectar directamente. Eh, todo eso puede ayudar. Um, si por cualquier razón no lo ves bien, puedes seguir escuchando. Y en el futuro te vamos a dar el video y el video sí se va a ver bien. ¿okay? Y entonces el video puedes ver todo escrito. Pero... Sí se debe arreglar durante la presentación. All right? So, thank you for that. Um, 
So that's that's the no knows uh, with an S, third person singular. Now the next one. Yes, Katia. Si es para un momento, si se aclara. The next one, the next sentence is we know them. We know them. Nosotros lo conocemos a ellos. We is the subject, no is the verb, them is the object, and the last one, they know us. Good, good. They know us. And 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 they is the subject, no is the verb, and us is the object. So otra vez, esto fue lo que hicimos la última vez um, en la clase, entonces un repaso. Pero simplemente lo que estamos mirando es el sujeto, el verbo y el objeto de la oración. Y nos estamos dando cuenta que cuando un pronombre se está usando como un sujeto, se usa la lista de arriba, la lista que está en um, azul y, y las palabras eh, con a, a, amarillo. Y cuando se usa un pronombre de objeto, se usa de la lista de la parte de abajo, que está con la, con la parte de atrás amarilla y las, y las, y las letras azules. ¿Ok? Uh, so that was the lesson from last week. Esa fue la lección de la semana pasada. So we're going to move on to today's, today's wonderful lesson. We're going to move on to reflexive pronouns. And we're going to write sentences using reflexive pronouns. That's what we're going to do in today's lesson. Um, and it's very similar in a way to last week's lesson where we have a different reflexive pronoun for every subject pronoun. So you got to learn every single reflexive pronoun for each subject pronoun. So for example, here you have all the subject pronouns and you have all the reflexive pronouns and uh, which ones connect. So we have I is myself, he is yo, yo mismo. That's what it means, right? You is yourself, right? He is tú o tú mismo, right? You, yourself. He, himself, sería él, él mismo, right? Um, the next one we have is she, herself, which would be ella y ella misma, right? Then we have it, para cosas o animales, ¿verdad? It, itself, sería eso y eso mismo, right? We also have we, which is nosotros, we, which is nosotros, and ourselves, nosotros mismos. Then you have you in yourselves, tú o ustedes mismos. Y quiero que vean una diferencia en, este, en esta parte, ¿verdad? Um, y la diferencia es, es esta, que aunque tú y ustedes es la misma palabra como subject pronoun y como object pronoun, como pronombre para los sujetos y pronombre para los objetos, you es la misma palabra, como reflexive pronoun sí cambia. Tú mismo, singular, is yourself. Y-O-U-R-S-E-L-F. Right? Termina en L-F. Now, yourselves, you como ustedes, aunque es la misma palabra, para ustedes mismos, la palabra sí cambia. Y cambia, el final de la palabra es V-E-S. So, es Y-O-U-R-S-E-L-V-E-S. -E -E so, si hay una diferencia entre tú y ustedes, cuando se usan los pronombres reflexivos y la diferencia es, es como termina. Una termina en singular, la otra termina en plural. Yourself con F va a ser um, singular y yourselves con V-E-S va a ser la forma plural. And the last one that we have is they, ellos, and themselves, ellos mismos. Okay? So if this is the first time you're seeing this, I want you to write these down in your notebooks. Si es la primera vez que ven esto, por favor escríbanlo en sus libretas. Um, debe practicarlo, debe aprender cómo deletrearlo. All of those things. You want to you learn all of that, okay? So, again, I, myself, you, yourself, he, himself, she, herself, it, itself, we, ourselves, you, yourselves, they, themselves. And now we have the first sentence. I know myself, right? So we have, I know myself. Yo me conozco mi, yo mismo, right? The subject is I. The verb 
is no, and the reflexive pronoun is myself. Ok, so, la, so las oraciones que vamos a mirar como, como ejemplos van a ser bien similares a las oraciones de la semana pasada, pero esta, esta, esta vez estamos usando los, los pronombres reflexivos, right? So, I know myself. Yo me conozco yo mismo, right? I is the subject, no is the verb, and myself is the reflexive pronoun. Ok. The next example is going to be You know yourself. The subject is you, the verb is no, and the reflexive pronoun is yourself. Tú te, conozca, tú te conoces tú mismo. Right? You know yourself. Tú te conoces, you know yourself. Um, so that, that's how you would say that. Si quieren decir, yo me conozco. In English, tienen que decir, I know myself. The reflexive pronoun is you need it. It's meant you have to have it. Right? If you want to say, tú te conoces, you know yourself. Yourself is, is mandatory. You need it. You got to have it in order for the sentence to be correct. Okay? We'll move on to the third sentence, the third example, which is, he knows himself. He knows himself. The subject is he. The verb is knows with an S. And the reflect, reflexive pronoun is himself. Okay, he knows himself. And the next sentence is very similar. Ella se conoce ella misma, or ella, ella se conoce, right? She knows herself. The subject is she, the verb is knows, and the reflexive pronoun is herself. Now remember, the verb has an S. Why? Third person singular. Tesora persona singular, el verbo lleva S, por eso es que el verbo conocer ha cambiado de no, sin S, a knows, con S. That's the reason why, okay? We'll move on to the next example. The next example, nosotros nos conocemos. We, we know ourselves. We know ourselves. The subject is we, the verb, pronoun is ourselves. V -E -S, al final es plural. Nosotros somos, es una palabra plural. Entonces, nosotros mismos tiene que ser plural también. Ourselves. And the last example, ellos se conocen a ellos mismos o ellos se conocen. They know themselves. Subject is going to be they, verb, no, reflexive pronoun, themselves. So those are all your examples there for the, res the reflexive pronouns. In the next slide, we're going to practice. So we're going to practice these in the next slide. And what we're going to do is I'm going to give you sentences. And I want you to write these sentences down. And I want you to use the reflexive pronouns in order to give me the answer to, to, what, to, to what's missing. Okay? So, for example, look at this sentence. Y estas son las oraciones que yo dije que posiblemente van a, van a tener palabras que a lo mejor no saben. Entonces, por favor, me preguntan si, tienen, si no entienden cualquier palabra. Por ejemplo, I hurt blank during the baseball game. Lo que yo quiero decir es que oh, yo me lastimé yo, a, a mí mismo. Yo me lastimé durante el juego de pelota, de baseball. Right? Um, what would be the answer? I'm going to let you guys think. También si alguien tiene la respuesta y la quiere poner en el chat, la puede poner en el chat. Right? Como yo diría en inglés, yo me lastimé. Hurt es last, lastimé. Right? Yo me lastimé durante el juego de pelota. Or the baseball game, el juego de baseball. So I'll wait for an answer. And if you have any other questions, please let me know. Okay. También quiero asegurar que todos tuvieron el tiempo para copiar los, uh, los um, pronombres reflexivos. Hi, Rafael. Uh, quiero, quiero asegurar que todos tuvieron el tiempo para copiar los, los pronombres reflexivos. Si no lo tienen, me dejan saber. Um, matter of fact, yo lo voy a poner en el chat para que lo puedan copiar de ahí también. Si no lo tienen, y a la misma vez yo espero a que me den la respuesta de la, de la oración que está en pantalla. I'll wait for that. 
No, Phil, it's okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. Okay, so what I'm gonna do in the chat, I'm going to send everybody um, the examples. Okay, so here are the examples here. I mean, not the examples, the, um, the reflexive pronouns. Here are they, myself, yourself, himself, herself, itself, themselves, yourselves, and ourselves, okay? And I'm gonna look at some of the answers. I see Mariela has one, and Katia and uh, Nereida has one as well. Thank you. So we have, um, I hurt myself during the baseball game. Yo me lastimé durante el juego de baseball. Y eso es correcto. That is correct. I hurt myself. Y lo que es una palabra junta. Um, so myself, todo junto. I hurt myself during, durante. During is la palabra durante. During the baseball game. Let's look at the next one. Look at the next one. Beth. Beth. Beth is a woman's name. Beth is a woman's name. Beth hurt blank during the baseball game. Beth hurt blank during the baseball game. Let me see the answers. Give me the answers in the chat so I can see that we know it. Beth hurt blank during the baseball game. Beth hurt blank during the baseball game. You can write it in your notebooks. If you if, if you want, you can put it on the chat so I can see it. Um, you have a couple of options, okay? Beth, and Beth is a woman's name. So that's gonna help you decide which reflexive pronoun you're going to be using. So let me see some answers and then I'll put the next answer up on the on the on the screen. Okay, now Rafael is with us. He's just gonna be listening today, but he is with us. So thank you, Rafael, for being with us. That's not that's not a problem. Okay, and, and if you have any questions, you can message me because I am um, as as most of you guys know, I am on Facebook. So Rafael is just messaging me through Facebook. So if you have any issues, Rafael. Send me a Facebook message. I'm here. I have my phone next to me. I can see it. All right. So we do have a, an answer there. Nereida has an answer for us. She says, Beth hurt herself during the baseball game. That is correct. That is very good. And I'm going to ask you to put a period. Period is a punto. Period. Don't, don't forget the period at, uh, at the end, but everything else is, is perfect. Okay. Beth hurt herself during the baseball game. Here's the next one, Robert. Robert heard blank during the baseball game. So I'll, I'll, I'll wait for an answer on that one. Robert heard blank during the baseball game. Thank you, Katia. Katia says Beth hurt herself during the baseball game. That is correct. Mariela says Beth hurt herself during the baseball game, and that is correct. Okay, so I'll wait for Robert now. So let me see the Robert sentence. All right, so think of Robert. It's a man or a male name, Robert. It's the English version of Roberto, right? So here we have it. But, and then, good. Robert hurt himself during the baseball game. And yes, Nereida... Good job. So we did. We are change, as you can notice. We are changing the subject pronouns. Uh, we're changing the subjects to the to subject pronouns, and that's really good. So um, so we can change it to he, right? So we changed Beth to she. So we can change Robert to he. So it's almost it's like a double practice. So that's very good. He hurt himself during the baseball game. He hurt himself during the baseball game. 
let's look at um, let's look at um, the next one. It, it like an animal or a pet. It is like an animal or a pet. It hurt blank jumping off the furniture. It hurt itself jumping off the furniture. Mariela says it hurt itself jumping off the furniture. And do we know what furniture means? Do we know what furniture means? Right, furniture is like chairs, tables. How do you say furniture in Spanish? Can somebody tell me how to say furniture in Spanish? Or not say furniture in Spanish. Right, so how do you say furniture in Spanish? And also, so we have the next one. Uh, you and I bought blank a new car this year. That's the next one. We have. A, we also have a question. Yes, that is correct, Katia. The question is, uh, the, does the verb does the verb hurt? Because lastimarse, verdad? Uh, the verb hurt in third person singular. Does it have an s? Yes. Um, it's a reg it's a regular verb. Um, so he hurts himself a lot. It's, it's a lastima mucho. He hurts himself a lot. I'm gonna put it on the chat. Okay. So he hurts himself a lot. It is fine. Uh, you would have to have an S there. Okay. Um, so furniture. Remember what furniture means. I hope everybody knows what furniture means. Like tables and chairs, uh, things like that. Uh, that, that's what furniture is. Ah, okay. Yes, 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 yes. yes. That's, okay, now I see what you're saying. He, um, no, but, but you know what it is? Uh, no, it, it, it shouldn't have an S. No, it shouldn't have an S. Um, hurt is un verbo. Okay, I, I want everybody to stop. I want everybody to listen. Esta va a ser una, una lección importante. Um, hurt is un verbo irregular. So hurt is the same in the past and in the present. La palabra hurt, lastimarse, esa palabra es irregular. So esto no pasa, no pasa siempre. Pero en el pasado, la palabra hurt, lastimarse, es lo mismo que en el presente. Es hurt. Entonces, en esta oración, porque Beth y Roberto y eso uh, se lastimaron Durante el juego, ya pasó. Entonces, ese hurt se está, yo, lo estamos usando en, forma pa, de, en el pasado. Y en el pasado, esa regla de tercera persona singular, el verbo lleva ese, esa regla no se usa. ¿Ok? So, the reason you see hurt without an S is because we're talking in the past. Pero si fuera en, en el presente, en el presente simple, que vamos a tener lecciones, ya esto es un poco más avanzado, vamos a tener lecciones de esto en el futuro. Pero ya en el presente simple, opuesto al pasado, sí se necesita ese cuando es tercera persona singular. Okay? But that's good. I'm, 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 glad, I'm glad that you, um, that you noticed that because that is a very, that's a great question. Okay? So I, I'm going to repeat it again. I'm going to say it one more time. Um, la palabra hurt es un verbo irregular. Entonces en el presente y en el pasado es la misma palabra, no cambia. En el presente, si, es, si es, el sujeto es tercera persona singular, Necesito la S. She hurts herself all the time. Ella se lastima todo el tiempo. She hurts herself all the time. Pero en el pasado no. En el pasado, esa regla no aplica. He hurt himself yesterday. Él se lastimó ayer. He hurt himself yesterday. Okay? All right. I, let me see the answer for the next one. You and I bought blank a new car this year. You and I bought blank a new car 
this year. So what is the answer there? You and I, and I want you to change it to a pronoun. So I want you to change you and I to a pronoun. Quiero que cambien tú y yo a un pronombre. Y quiero que me den la respuesta. Okay. You and I bought blank a new car this year. Katia has an answer for us. Capital W, good. Era good. We bought ourselves a new car this year. Nosotros no, no compramos un carro nuevo este año. Don't forget the period at the end. Don't forget the period at the end. Very good. So now we'll move on to the next one. Okay, so I think we're getting it. If there's any questions, let me know. If there's any vocabulary that you don't understand, let me know. Okay, if I'm going too fast, let me know. Here's the next one. Mr. and Mrs. Lee bought blank a new car this year. Mr. and Mrs. Lee bought blank a new car this year. Again, thank you, Mariela, for the answer. Uh, change the subject to a pronoun. Mr. and Mrs. Lee bought blank a new car this year. Right, so I'll wait for that answer there. Okay. So don't forget to change the subject for a pronoun and to give me the answer. Mr. and Mrs. Lee bought blank a new car this year. We have one answer there. Thank you, Mariela. I'll wait for one more answer. And I want you to notice, um, so far, all of these sentences are in the past. Okay. So I, do, I want you to notice that as well. So Mr. and Mrs. Lee bought a new car, bought blank a new car this year. And the answer is, very good, there we go. We have two answers now. They bought themselves a new car this year. They bought themselves a new car this year, very good. We have the period at the end. Look at the next one. You bought blank a new car this year. You bought blank a new car this year. That's the next one. So we'll wait for the answer on that one. You bought blank a new car this year. Okay, so I'll wait on, on the answer on that one. And so far, we're doing really good. So we're learning these reflexive pronouns, right? Which mean yo mismo, ella misma, el mismo, eso mismo, nosotros mismos. Ellos mismos, that's what they mean. So we use them in English when we talk about ourselves, when we talk about us and something happening with us. Okay, so what about the next one? You bought blank a new car this year. What would be the answer there? Good. So I see that one in a, in a plural. That's plural, right? And that's okay. Make it singular. It's okay if it's plural, porque you puede ser tú y ustedes. Pero en singular, how would you do it in singular? Right? You bought, como tú, you bought yourself. Sí? Si, si lo escriben con la V-E-S al final, me están diciendo que es plural. 
ustedes. Si lo escriben con la LF o con la F nada más al final, me está diciendo que es singular. Entonces, you significa tú. Right? En esta yo la hice como tú, pero no está incorrecta como ustedes porque you significa los dos. Okay? You bought yourself. You bought yourself a new car this year. So that, that's very good. Good job. Thank you. Thank you for the answers. Here's the next one. Here's the next one. You and Tom bought blank a new car this year. What about that one? You and Tom bought blank a new car this year. See? Y por eso fue que la anterior estaba en singular. Because look at this one. Ahora miren esta. You and Tom bought blank a new car this year. Y también quiero que cambien el... También quiero que cambien el sujeto a pronombre. Okay? I want you to change the subject to a pronoun. And we have one answer there. Okay, I'll just wait for another one. You and Tom bought blank a new car this year. Okay. I'm going to put the answer up soon. In case anybody wants to answer before then. So that's the answer there. And this is the answer. You bought yourselves a new car this year. Okay. Right, I'll leave this up for a minute. Voy a dejar esta, esta página como por un minuto para que puedan copiar si necesitan copiar. I'll also answer any questions. Cualquier pregunta que tengan, la respondo ahora en el chat. Y después vamos a seguir a la próxima página. We have an answer from Mariela. You bought yourselves a new car this year. Very good. Excellent. That is right. All right. So, yourself, con F, yourselves, vz, yourselves, V-E-S, yourself, singular, yourselves, plural, okay? All right. So, now we're going to move on to the next um, slide. And we're going to have a little bit more practice with new words. So I, I want you guys to learn new words, okay? So this is the first one. Raven wants to buy blank a new purse. Okay, Raven is a woman. So what would be the answer? Raven wants to buy blank a new purse. And Raven is a woman. So what would be the answer? And you can also change the subject to, to a pronoun. I want you to change the subject to a pronoun. So I see an answer, it looks good. I just want the subject to a pronoun. We're going to get used to doing that. It's a little bit of an extra practice. Okay. And there's the answer. She wants to buy herself a new purse. Okay, she wants to buy herself a new purse. Okay, I, I, I see what you're saying. Um, you, you're, not, you're not able to see it. Um, it's okay, try to copy on your notebook. Trata de copiar en la libreta. Por ahora, eso ayudaría. Por ahora, right? Um, también puede intentar, si miras abajo, um, es como un YouTube video, como un video de YouTube. Si está live, está en el momento. Um, Asegúrate que está live. Si quiere intentar atrasarlo unos cuantos segundos, puede intentar. La única cosa es que no va a estar a, a, corriendo la misma vez con nosotros, pero a lo mejor eso ayudaría a que, a que se vea un poquito más claro. Uh, si no, 
usa la libreta y entonces cuando, cuando te mandemos el video, el video sí se va a ver claro. Ok. So don't worry. I'm, I'm sorry that it's not working, um, you know, really well, but at least you can hear us, which is good. Escuchar también es bueno. So, aunque sea, puedes escuchar que por ahora sí es bueno y ojalá que puedas escribir si tienes la libreta y un lápiz o lapicero. Eso también es buena práctica. So, try to write it. All right, we have an answer here. My children enjoyed blank a lot at the park. At the park. My children enjoyed blank a lot at the park. Okay. And I see two answers. And those answers are, are good. They're correct. So they, my children, right? They enjoyed themselves a lot at the park. So make sure, creo que, uh, que aseguro que, que entiendan esas palabras. So nadie me está preguntando. So eso significa que ustedes saben lo que significa purse, children, and that's good. Si, si saben lo que significa enjoyed, that's good. Si no saben, you have to ask, me tienen que preguntar, okay? Let me know if you don't understand something. Si no entiende la oración completa, yo la leo en español. But you have to let me know. Okay? We're in number three. Estamos en la tercera. Wilson and I looked at blank in the mirror. Wilson and I. And don't forget, you have to change the subject to a pronoun. Okay? You have to change the subject to a pronoun. Okay? So, Wilson and I looked at blank in the mirror. Change the subject to a pronoun, and then you can give me the answer on the chat. Wilson and I looked at blank in the mirror. Okay, we have an answer. Anita, thank you. Don't forget the capital. Don't forget the capital, right? Capital W. And don't forget the period. Don't forget the period. But that is correct, right? Very good, Katia. Thank you for the answer as well. So there it is, capital W, period, at mirror. Here's number four. Here is number four. The manager, Mr. Lopez, will do the job blank. The manager, Mr. Lopez, will do the job blank. I want a pronoun. Be careful. You have to know how much to take out. Quiero un pronombre, pero tengan cuidado porque tiene que saber cuánto del sujeto tiene que quitar. Tiene que quitar el sujeto entero. No tiene que buscar cuál es el sujeto porque este es un poco, es un poco diferente, right? It's a little different. The manager... Mr. Lopez will do the job blank. Okay, so let's look at uh, let's look at this one and let's get the answer once we can. Okay, I see an answer there. That answer that I see is really good. It looks good to me. All right. If anybody else wants to put an answer up, please do. Right. The manager, Mr. Lopez, will do the job blank. So he will do the job himself. He will do the job himself. He will do the job himself. Okay. We're going to move on to the next one. Here's the next one. Thank you, Mariela, for the answer as well. Our professor, Miss Lee, will teach the class blank. Our professor, Miss Lee, will teach the class blank. Our professor, Miss Lee, will teach the class blank. So what's the answer there? Our professor, Miss Lee, will teach the class blank. And I see one answer there. Thank you, Nereida, for the answer as well. He will do the job himself. Very good. Don't forget the period. And I have two answers for the next one as well. She will teach the class herself. Ella va a enseñar la clase ella misma. Okay. 
she will teach the class herself. And then we'll move on to the next one. They need to serve blank their dinner. They need to serve blank their dinner. They need to serve blank their dinner. Okay, so let's take a look. All right, and then you don't have to change the subject pronoun here because it's already a pronoun. However, you do need to give me the answer. They need to serve blank their dinner. I have one answer so far. I'll put the answer on the screen in a couple of seconds. I'll also wait for some other people to respond. But they need to serve. What does serve mean? We all know what serve means. Serve. What does that mean? Que significa serve? If somebody can write it on the chat. Si alguien sabe que significa serve, please put it on the chat. What does serve mean? Es, es un verbo. It's a verb. What does serve mean? Right? And that is the answer there. They need to serve themselves their dinner. And then we have the next one. You blank will have to finish your homework. You blank will have to finish your homework. You blank will have to finish your homework. Servir. Mariela, thank you. Serve significa servir. So, ellos necesitan servirse su propia comida, su propio almuerzo. Very good. What about the next one? You blank will have to finish your homework. You blank will have to finish your homework. You blank will have to finish your homework. And you can do the singular here, by the way. Try to do singular, singular you. Don't do plural. Let's do singular. Even though plural is not wrong, but you can still do singular for me. All right, we have an answer here. We have Mariela giving us an answer. And that does look good. You yourself will have to finish your homework, you yourself. Tú, tú mismo tienes que acabar tu tarea. And later I'm giving you homework, and you're going to have to do it yourself. Good. All right, here we go. So we have the last one. I really enjoyed blank during the festival. I really enjoyed blank during the festival. I really enjoyed blank during the festival. Yes, Katia, very good. Don't forget the capital Y. Don't forget the capital Y. Okay. I really enjoyed blank during the festival. What would be the answer there? I really enjoyed blank during the festival. We have an answer. And the answer says, two answers. I really enjoyed myself during the festival. I really enjoyed myself during the festival. I'm going to leave these uh, for about a minute. Voy a dejar esta página por un minuto para que puedan copiar so that you can copy. If you have any questions, you can also let me know. I'll be looking at the chat to answer any questions. So, so we've done really good. Hopefully you've been able to understand today's lesson really well and how to use it. Um, I am going to give you some homework that I do expect you to do. And that homework is going to be good in order for you to practice this. Okay, uh, Mariela gave us an answer for furniture. Mobiliario. Right. Todas las sillas, los muebles, mesas, everything. Todo lo que está usualmente en la sala is uh, furniture. Sillas, muebles, mesas, those things. 
as your furniture. And in the bedrooms, so your cuarto de la meta, right? Estantes, that's all furniture. Very good. All right. So if there are no further questions, I'm going to move on to the next page, which is going to show you your homework for the week. And I want everybody to do the homework. I was very happy with my last class, uh, the advanced class, um, and even the beginner class, because they're giving me my homework on time more. So I'm going to push you guys to really do this homework. That extra practice is really great. So this is the homework here. You want to write eight sentences using reflect, ref, uh, each reflexive pronoun only once. So quiero saber cada una de las de, de la, la, de los pronombres reflexivos solamente una vez y, escribir, uh, y van a escribir una oración con cada uno, right? And you're going to email your responses to me. You me van a mandar las respuestas, Rafael, at ondemandschools.com. Es mi correo electrónico. All right, so you can send me the answers there. I will read them. I will check them for you. I will let you know if there's any major mistakes. Um, it's good practice. 24 hours, guys. I'm giving you a day. Le estoy dando un día para hacerlo. Si lo pueden hacer hoy mismo. Cuando se acabe esta clase, cojan los 20 minutos, 15, 20 minutos que le va a tomar y um, escriban ocho oraciones usando cada una de estas y me la manda. Acuérdense que um, uh, cuando empiezan una oración tienen que ser mayúscula y la mayoría de las oraciones si nos pregunta o un, algo que están diciendo que es fuerte, entonces es, es un punto al final o period. So yo sí también busco para esas cosas, ¿verdad? So when you send me the homework, make sure that your sentences are grammatically correct, all right? Next class, we have another class tomorrow. Tomorrow's class is advanced. La clase de mañana es avanzada. Um, los temas ya, si, se, si, si estuvieron para las clases anteriores, se están dando cuenta que los temas se ponen más difíciles en lo que las clases siguen. So lo, la, los temas de la clase avanzada hasta ahorita todavía están un poco básicos pero se van a poner más difícil, entonces mañana tenemos una clase muy buena para la clase avanzada, si la quieren tratar, si encontraron esta clase como en el medio, o si la encontraron fácil, deben tomar la clase de avanzada. You should do it. You'll be fine. Si esta clase fue muy difícil y como que tienen que trabajar mucho para aprenderla, so, si la quieren ver, la pueden ver la clase avanzada, si no, entonces pueden practicar la clase de principiante otra vez, o se pueden quedar con esta. Either way, lo que ustedes sientan que sea mejor. Pero para los que sí están interesados en la clase avanzada, si es mañana, es a las 7 de la noche, eh, zona este, right? um, creo que todos los que estamos juntos hoy estamos en zona este. Eso es la misma hora. Mañana a las 7 de la noche, um, yo voy a mandar un correo electrónico con la información cómo registrarse, lo que lo tengo en Facebook, también le voy a mandar el link para registrarse. Y si conocen a alguien que posiblemente se quieren registrar, um, le pueden dejar saber que me manden un email también al mismo correo electrónico que le di y aquí está otra vez. Y ellos, y si se quieren registrar, um, me, que me manden el nombre completo y el correo electrónico de ellos um, que ellos quieren usar para registrarse. A ese, si me lo mandan ahí, yo lo registro a ellos. And then they can, they can take the class, all right? So that's for tomorrow. Um, we are Go Future now. Uh, Go Future Now, I'm, I'm going to put the, the website, www.gofuturenow.com, and I'm also putting it on um, on uh, the chat. You can visit us there. When you go to Go Future Now, you can subscribe. When you subscribe, then you can put your name and your password, which will be great, so that you can see all the things that we have, all right? Um, when you get there, there's a lot of things for you, for you to be able to practice. Uh, for example, you're going to be able to look at the, the courses, but you can also look at the blog. The blog is great because there's a lot of, um, a lot of free things there in the blog that you can look at. So I want you guys to, to go right there, get, go to the blog, and then you're going to go to the next page. Um, and then you can pick any of these, any of these. They have free information free practices, and then there's our website again, gofuturenow.com, right? So, otra vez, le quiero dar las gracias a todos por estar conmigo hoy, uh, con nosotros aquí en Go Future Now. Um, 
y ojalá nos vemos mañana. Si tienen cualquier pregunta, me mandan un mensaje y ahí seguimos. Um, no se olviden hacer la tarea, por favor, me la mandan. Everybody have a good night and thank you very much for being with us today.